The Himalayas had become a sort of pilgrimage for almost every Royal Enfield owner for over decades now. So much so that the name Royal Enfield and the Himalayas have become almost synonymous when it comes to motorcycling in India. In fact, if you're a Royal Enfield owner, you just had to make that trip to the high Himalayas. And that's the legacy of the birth of the first Royal Enfield Himalayan back in 2016. It was born out of a need to explore the Himalayas, which Royal Enfield owners have been doing for decades over different kinds of 350cc, 500cc models. That's the genesis of the first Royal Enfield Himalayan. The original Royal Enfield Himalayan, which was launched in 2016, has made quite an impression as a versatile and accessible adventure bike, not just in India, but around the world. But today, we have the evolution of the Himalayan, the all new Himalayan. It's a completely new motorcycle from the ground up, new liquid cool engine, new chassis, new features. So, we're gonna ride this and talk about what's improved, what's good, what's great, or what could have perhaps improved even more. But before we do that, please do like the Car and Bike channel, hit that bell icon, and leave a comment of course. And if you like this video, please do share it ahead. The new Himalayan retains its familiar silhouette, but there are important differences, like the all new 452cc Sherpa engine, which also doubles up as a stress member of the chassis. The liquid cool engine is almost square and has a bigger bore and shorter stroke than before, with more power and more torque across a wider rev range. Suspension has been updated as well, which show us separate function forks and there's more ground clearance. Along with that, braking hardware has been improved with bigger brake discs at both ends. The feature list has expanded with an all new TFT tripper dash with three layouts, including Google Maps integration, throttle is ride by wire now and offers two riding modes with eco mode lowering power in the first four gears with a softer throttle response. In all, the new Himalayan is new in more ways than one. It certainly looks sleeker, muscular and more substantial than before with better road presence. Now looks are subjective so I'll leave it up to you to make an opinion of how you find the design of the new Royal Enfield Himalayan. Personally, I quite like the looks of the bike and the more time I've spent with it, the design has started growing on me. Now on the spec sheet, the new Himalayan is just 3 kgs lighter than the outgoing Himalayan with 196 kgs curb width. But if you look at it, it's got better suspension, better brakes. Overall, it's a completely new package and plus it's got a bigger fuel tank also so that you have better range between tankfuls. Do let us know what you think about the design, what in your opinion are the standout features of the design in the comments. On the go, the new Himalayan immediately comes across as different. The engine's performance is immediately apparent with the shorter stroke and higher revs. With nearly 40 horsepower on tap and generously spread torque, the new Himalayan packs more than enough performance. And what's a revelation is also its on-road manners with very good handling and stability around corners. Braking performance is also impressive with bigger discs offering more bite than before. Now let's talk about the engine performance. On-road, the new Himalayan certainly has much better performance than the outgoing Himalayan. Of course, the point to be noted is that we are riding this bike at very high altitude, about 10,000 feet, which is roughly about 3,000 meters or more above sea level. So according to Royal Enfield, at that altitude, because of the thin air, you won't get the full 40 horsepower that the engine offers. So the engine and this rarefied atmosphere is giving about 28 horsepower only. But we'll give it a lowdown about the full performance once we get to ride the bike for a longer time at closer to sea level, on everyday conditions, in traffic, how is it to commute, and how is it as a versatile touring machine. But the standout feature is of course a new liquid cooled engine. Now it's got a meaty power band. A power band starts at around 3000 rpm, goes up to 7000 rpm. So you open the throttle and it's just pulls, 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 pulls. 
So there's no doubt of performance and it's really, really nice and it's really impressive, the performance in the mid-range. On the flip side though, once you go below 2000 RPM, the Himalayan, if you are riding at those revs, 4000 to 7000 RPM, from 2000 to 3000, it feels a little lethargic. So that's something which you need to keep in mind. Mind you, if you keep riding at 2000, 3000 RPM, you won't feel the difference. But if you're constantly exploring the higher revs, when you come down to 2000 RPM, you'll need to downshift to make it go and hit those levels. The performance is very impressive, but below 2000, it feels a little lethargic. Overall, in terms of performance, this has got enough and more for all your needs, be it commuting, be it touring, and very good off-road capability as well. Let's go find out how is it off-road. In the dirt, the new Himalayan feels like a completely different animal. It's now much better balanced, more stable, and easy to handle. The suspension soaks up everything and it just grinds over broken surfaces without a care in the world. In all, it's stable, planted, and easily tackles all kinds of surfaces. So when you talk about off-road capability, if the old Himalayan was very good off-road, this one, the new Himalayan has taken it several notches above. Handling is superb, the weight balance is fine, ergonomics is spot on. You can stand up and ride very comfortably and although it's a 196 kg uh, curb weight bike, but you won't feel that weight when riding off-road. The suspension is brilliant, just pointed over obstacles, it just carries its line and you feel supremely confident while handling this bike. It's not very heavy also, it's not beyond 200 kilos. So if even if you're riding off-road alone, you drop the bike, you won't need help, you can pick it up very easily yourself. What stands out for me is off-road capability. This Himalayan, the new Himalayan, has taken it to a next level. We'll of course be doing some more off-road runs once we get the bike for a longer time back home. And then we'll tell you, how is it hardcore off-road on different surfaces? But for now, off-road capability of new Himalayan is very, very impressive. But one thing that you need to keep in mind, especially if you're starting out riding off-road, is that uh, you can switch up the rear ABS to lock the rear wheel while riding off-road. But the brakes, brakes are superb, even on road. But once you switch up the rear ABS, the rear brake pads are centered pads. So they have a lot of wide. Even if you dab it once, it just grips the wheel. So that's something to take care of because it locks up very easily and slides around. So it could take you by surprise. Nothing much to really worry about, but you should keep in mind it could take you by surprise. But as long as you have confidence in this bike, it can go anywhere you want it to go. With the kind of kit and features it now comes with, the new Himalayan is certain to be more expensive than the existing Himalayan, but not very expensive. In our estimates, an extra room price of 2,70,000 or 2,80,000 rupees will make it a super value for money package. And at those prices, it will not just take on every other motorcycle in its price bracket, but also take the fight to middleweight adventure bikes costing more than twice. So it brings us to the final question. Is the new Himalayan an improved bike over the outgoing 411? The answer, most definitely yes. It's improved in every aspect, be it engine performance, be it handling, be it ergonomics, be it off-road capability. On every other aspect, the new Himalayan is a completely transformed machine. In fact, I'd go on to say that it's a completely new machine, you know, in compared to the old Himalayan. And best of all, it's a versatile machine. You can commute on it, you can tour on it, and you can, of course, do a lot of off-road riding on it. And even if you're looking at an adventure touring motorcycle, the new Himalayan has it all. It's got performance, it's got handling, on-road performance, off-road capability, it works. So, if you're looking for an adventure touring machine, this is not very heavy. It's approachable, it's accessible, and it's got all those qualities that make it a very good adventure bike. So, in my book, the new Himalayan completely nails it in that respect. <music>